Hello, hello. I screwed up a second ago. So there we go. Now we're live and the other one we can delete. Okay. Give me one more second. Yeah, 28 seconds of that. All right. Hey there, my name is Ryan Kingsline, and um, I'm the founder of Vertex School, a couple of other things. We've changed our name quite a bit, um, but right now what we are working towards is the future of creative tech. Much more than games, much more than digital sculpting, much more than what we did with UArtsy, which is, you know, just um, share a platform for several of my friends and, and uh, give people a voice. What I'm focused on now is uh, building a company that will help people um, many of them who are on the front line right now, in fact, one of my students, Kevin, just shout out to you, Kevin, man, thank you for all the work that you're doing, um, are on the front lines of this COVID thing, you know, um, restocking stores, working in retail, working in, you know, all these essential places now when we're home on the quarantine. Uh, but we can only go out and get our food, get our stuff at the pharmacies, things like that. It's crazy. Um, so I wanted to come in while we're in quarantine and, um, this is kind of, I'm going to do basically what I did in day four, which is I'm going to record a class. Uh, why don't I record a class? You can see it too. All right. I don't know if this is going to be a free class later or if it's going to be wrapped up with the immersives, but we're all home. And one of the core arts that we have today, uh, for anything 3d is your ability to sculpt. And so what I want to do is just get in and start to sculpt and you know start to have some some fun exploring the essential characteristics of what a sculpt is and how we actually go about thinking like sculptors because sculpting is thinking to me it's not seeing seeing is a mistake many people think that they're copying reality you're not copying reality you're copying what you yourself understand and so as a sculptor, we have to learn how to bridge perception and understanding. We have to perceive things and perceive aspects of things. And we from there build an understanding. And that's really to me what art and sculpture is really all about. You know, it's one of the reasons why I don't go in for too much abstract work myself. It's because the whole purpose of this is for me to understand. Understand the human body is really one of the most important things for me, the, the morphology of it. All right, so all that done and said, we're going to get into ZBrush here. We're going to do some digital sculpting. I'm going to record a class just like, you know, I'm going to start over from scratch, basically. I'm just letting you know because you're here live with me what I'm going to do. All right, do me one favor, though, so I know you can hear me. Petar, great. Yeah, day five was my daughter's birthday, so I was, um, I was quite busy, uh, especially during this time right imagine having your birthday during the quarantine super sucked man super sucked um but we did our best and she had a fun time so uh we did what we could and um there we go that really that really annoyed the hell out of me but anyways now glad you can hear me thanks Pitar. now i know I'm going to get in we're going to switch over into zbrush in fact i will switch the camera here in just a second there's the camera. Remember, this is a course that will probably be at Vertex School later on. If you guys want to get in, learn about creative tech, get a job in creative tech. That's not just games. It's not just film, but it's AR, it's VR. I just interviewed Freak from AppliedIntuition.co. He used to work at Apple. Before that, he was in games. There is an amazing opportunity out there if you learn this 3D stuff. And you master this because this is this is the future. Everything everything's gonna need that. Every just gonna be basic language of being an artist. That's me just ramping up. All right, let's get ourselves into this day four of the quarantine. We we ended with this result, which if we turn floor on, we were basically working with um, our reference. All right, so I'm gonna start over now. I put a little clap in. All right, now the next thing that we need to focus on as we get in here and sculpt, um, we need to spend some time like understanding what this is. How do we go deeper in a sculpt? 
what do we need to establish? Because the usual procedure for us, and the one that's the mistake, is that we just kind of go in and we start dabbling with things. And what happens a lot of times is that we just end up reinforcing what, we, well, we reinforce the mistakes that we have. So here I am, I, I can keep myself busy. Almost everybody here watching this and, and listening to this can keep themselves busy. You know, we can even grab a skull, like let's say for example, um, here, right? We can even grab a skull and then rotate this around until we get it right into the view that we want. And we can just start the process of sculpting. We can say, okay, so da 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 da. Okay, I'm gonna trim that up. Oh, let's put Z sub on, you know, because I'm holding it with my hand. And, and we start to be reactive which is okay, we're reactive to the surface and to what we're seeing. But the problem that you have as a creative is that you actually aren't seeing, you know, exactly what you think. You're seeing stuff, but your mind is then interpreting that into some form of knowledge, some form of understanding. So how do I actually get a comprehensive understanding of this. What's This is what sculpting is all about is, you know, is taking this knowledge of all this crazy, all these half tones and organizing this into something that makes sense. In fact, I just literally did that right here. Uh, I built this specific shape that's called the frontal process of the maxilla. And that is a super important shape. But I built it as a tri as a kind of a triangle slash a quad. I'm not necessarily looking at all the crazy curvature and the little bump that happens right in there. Like that's not the essential stuff for me right now. What I am doing is trying to triangulate and establish, you know, the overall essence of this and keep it as simple as possible while keeping it as descriptive as possible. So all of that done and said, what we're really trying to do is move to the next level, right? There's two ways that we do. We either kind of move to the next part or we have to move to the next level of understanding in this. And so what I wanna do is show you how you move to the next level, right? Because there's one thing that does it. And the great part about this is that that one thing, when you learn how to do this, changes everything because it exists on all levels, face, body, everything. And there's one thing that you do is you shift your focus from what you think of as features to the space between the features. You have to find the space between the features. Imagine the brow, okay? I can tell you, and I did in the last class, there's the superciliary arch, there's the external angular process of the frontal bone, right? If we come in here and we look at this, um, there is the superciliary arch the external angular process of the frontal bone. So how do I level up my sculpting? Because I can sculpt this, I can sculpt this, right? It's kind of like when we, um, when we are uh, starting out, we sculpt lips and those lips look like those candy lips, right? Those things that buy that ring. And that is a function of your thinking process. You're sculpting lips, but as a professional, I don't sculpt lips. Lips have got zero to do with Jack. They got nothing to do with any of the conversation. Lips have, they're irrelevant. If lips are anything, they're a little tiny line that goes on at the end that we call the red line, right? That's it. Or just to create a little bit of an accent for a lift in the highlight. Otherwise, I'm sculpting the teeth. I'm sculpting the orbicularis oris. I'm sculpting, you know, the pup, uh, the puppet line. I'm sculpting the mental fold right here. Okay, I'm sculpting, you know, this plane right here and the up plane, the down plane. I'm sculpting the three parts of the upper lip that you can see in Michelangelo's work. All that stuff. Okay, but this next thing that you do is you go from thinking about parts. Come on. You go from thinking about parts to thinking about the space between the parts and analyzing the space between these parts to see if you can understand what's happening. Because we want to build a relationship 
between parts. That's what structure is. Structure by definition is a relationship between parts. So that's the missing key. In all the sculpting that you've done, if you've had problems and you haven't understood what's going on, the fundamental problem you're making is always, uh, it's always a thinking problem. And it's not understanding the relationship between parts, i.e. structure, right? You know, you get on and you get these art classes from people and they're like, oh, artistic anatomy, right? I say that all the time. But I like to break this all down into common language because artists, just like doctors, have their own language. And then you have to learn their language. And that's annoying as hell to me because true understanding comes when it's in the simplest possible terms. That's when true understanding happens. So when we think about this and developing it, um, the primary step that we have to take next is understanding the relationship between parts. And you do that by studying what's in between, right? I'll give you another example and then we'll get in and we'll, I'll show you what I do next. So if we look at this, let's go into this camera. Um, superciliary arch, external angular process of the frontal bone. What do we know about these? What can, what decisions, what assumptions can we make about these two shapes? Well, one, notice how the superciliary arch is above. It's higher than this one. Okay, that's important. All right, and then we also know, well, there's kind of a flattish straight line, roughly half of that distance, and then it becomes a rounded shape the rest of that distance. So that offset's important. And then we also know the characteristic. This is a bony ridge into a round mass. That same exact same thing happens uh, when we sculpt the forearm. So when we are looking at this, that's the kind of structure we're trying to understand. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to make sure my camera perspective, yeah, 85. Wow. Okay. Um, I shouldn't be having, so that means that's probably a little intense. And right now what I'm looking at, just so we're kind of crystal clear on this conversation, I'm looking at point, point, and point, okay? And if you look at this, point, 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 notice the angle of that. And do I have that same angle here? Kind of not. It's a little bit more like that. So I can take some of these forms down and I'll understand the structure better. I'm going to put this right over there, because I'm going to be using this a lot. Okay, so I'm going to take this, go in with the move brush, and just drop that down. Like that. Tiniest little bit. Okay, I'm also going to drop that down a little bit. And I will move that up a little bit as well. Okay, I'm looking right now. Okay, it came in right here. There we go. That's a little closer, but I'm also noticing a couple of other things. I'm noticing that that temporal line, the temporal ridge, has a little bit more oomph right there. So I'm going to sculpt in a line. There we go. That's a little bit more accurate. And then build that bridge. So now instead of looking at these individual parts and trying to sculpt what I think they are, I'm actually looking at how they relate to each other. And then from there building, you know, the essential characteristics um, that I need. There we go. Now also, as I look through here, I see another thing that's kind of important. Bop, bop. So as I place this, I see there's a line that's there. I see a temporal line, and I see a line right there coming almost from the superciliary arch going all the way back. So these are little structural shapes I now start to look for um, in this conversation. Oh, getting that a little off. my embed. I'm going to set my embed at two. There you go. Now we started to get that those shapes in there and be a little bit more accurate with them. 
Okay, now I'm going to get back into this work, and I'm going to say, okay, so that's a rounded shape or a, a, a hard edge shape moving into a rounded shape. Okay, cool. All right, so we've done a better job of establishing that brow. Look at what a couple of steps do to make that even cooler. There you go. So, so much neater now. And that comes from me not necessarily worrying about, okay, so that's what I think it is. Now I'm just going to go in and I'm going to start to look at it from different angles and I'm going to start to say point A, point B, point C, uh, line D. Oh, well, look, in between here and there, there's some shape that now I need to calculate into it. And in my intellectual understanding of it, I now feel better about it, right? And that's the key thing that you understand. You got to understand about this is there's an intellectual understanding, um, but your intellectual understanding is going to break down. The most important thing that you do is you bring a toolkit to the conversation, right? It's not important what you know, because you're going to forget all of this, right? Like I was in this class with the amazing sculptors, like my hero in sculpting, uh, Richard McDonald, uh, in in sculpting only. And um, at a certain point, there's certain words, certain anatomical terms that he wouldn't necessarily know. But I might because I've been brushing up on my anatomy. But it didn't matter because that guy's toolkit was unreal. When you put something in front of him, he brought an analysis and, and a process to it that is, you know, nearly unmatched um, today. That's what you have to develop, right? It's not about putting it in your head. It's about developing a process between your hands and your head and really working the space between me and whatever this is in front of me. The space that's in between here, that's the space that makes a difference. And I know I'm going on a little bit of a tangent, but when we increase our capacity as creatives, we don't increase it in terms of, oh, I finally know where the brachioradialis is. No, we increase it by becoming uh, better able to triangulate and understand the shape around us, right? And so looking at this, we learn how to keep something oval, but not inflated, not overly um, volumetric. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, let's keep looking as we go through this. Now, um, I'm looking at reference. And again, I've got reference directly in front of me. Uh, but if you don't have reference, you don't have to buy a skull. They cost money. Um, just go to uh, Sketch Fab Anatomy Next. There is amazing stuff there. These guys know what they're talking about. You can go into this Caucasian. You can go into this one that's kind of colored, which is neat, or you just go straight into this one. Okay, this is a beautiful piece. And in fact, the, the sculpt that you see, the skull you see me when I show that on camera, that's actually from the guys here. Sandus and Oldis came over to the studio back when it was in Los Angeles and, um, and gave me that skull uh, as, a, as a present. Um, I don't know what for. I was infinitely grateful. That's all I know. Um, all right, so let's look at that. And now, see, we can look at this in the same way that I am. And what do we see? If we were looking at this um, in the same way, you know, that I was doing, I'd say, okay, well, look, there's A, there's B, there's C. That's kind of a similar relationship. I had a peak that went like that. This peak is like this. But I'm also seeing, okay, there's my temporal line. And in between that temporal line and the frontal eminence, it's not just a meh. There's actually a shape here. What is that shape? How does that break? Because all sculpting at the end of the day is you taking something crazy and breaking it down into a few component parts so that it represents something that you're familiar with, right? And so then we go in and we say, okay, no, that was the wrong line. Let's go and delete that line. And then now I know I can connect these dots and I will get 
something that imitates it. And that's my job, is to basically take complexity, break it down through process into something that I can recreate, right? That's the important part of what we're doing here. And again, you got to bring your toolkit to the conversation. All right. So you can be using this, or you can be using the one I've got, and you just take this and you move it off into another screen. I have an actual uh, skull, and it's probably the same one that they use. So I'm going to basically just keep my zebra screen totally full center, and then I will, um, I will, uh, I'll just be sculpting in it. Okay. So hopefully, too, I'll be. What is this? Oh, that's what that is. I'm recording this in a software that's kind of new to me. Um, okay. So when we do this, I've kind of done what I want here, although I do see a line right there. Now I want to go in and say, all right, there's the cheek. There is the maxilla or the, the teeth, the muzzle of the mouth right there. Now I want to get the space in between, which I kind of already started to study a little bit. But this, I want to get cheek and that space that's in between. Because again, the theme of today is how do you level up your sculpting? You level it up by studying this, the structures between these points. So I'm going to get back into my uh, sculpt here. And I'm going to rotate this around. And again, if you're looking at my, this is, this is exactly what I got going on. I got this, although it's slightly moved over, or I'll move it over here. And I'm bringing a toolkit of analysis. I'm looking for the high point. So I'm, I'm going to look at it from this view, and I'm going to say, OK, so there's a line that goes right there, right? That's an important line for me. There's a line that goes right there. Oh, my hand got right in the way. There's a line that goes here and a line that goes there. And so I'm going to draw those on this right now. So it's kind of uber uh, clear. And why don't we head over into standard brush and uh, let me adjust the draw size and did i turn poly paint on for this no okay so i want to understand and increase that draw size slightly i see there's one line right there right now there's also another line right here that goes about like that there's also another line right there so it goes about i am pretty accurate Okay, and then how does this come down? It comes down about like that. So I'm seeing, there we go. And that kind of comes down. So I actually got a pretty good representation of that. Um, now, if I come in and I look at it from this view, yeah. Now, look at it from this view. Okay, and I'm going to undo those drawing marks. Bop, bop. Okay, there's a little bit more of a divot in there. And then now there's this, this straight line. So look at that. There's a straight line there. And then there's a straight line right there. And I'm missing that. I've kind of over-exaggerated the roundness there. And it comes about, if I'm looking at these the same, dot, 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 it's about right there. Look at that. So now i got to triangulate that and start to establish that shape to get that a little bit better. Um, so let's get ourselves in and make that happen. I'm going to put this down for a second. And I'm going to hold in my mind's eye that shape. So I need that to kind of push back. Oh, let's go into this. i got to be careful. It switches cameras with some of my ZBrush hotkeys. There we go. That's a nice line. I need to go a little bit deeper. There, I feel better about that. And then straighten that line out. Deepen that line. And there we go. And this is pretty thin stuff. So I'm going to establish some of the thinness by just putting a little bit. And uh, I'm going to increase my embed. I'd set it to 2 to be a little gentler. There we go. Now, if we remember correctly, there was a line that moved down. And then there was a shape that connected this. So we need to get back in 
and study this. But for the most part, we've got one line, two lines. It moved in quite nicely. I did that by memory because I've done that several times. Then we've gone in and established this down plane that's here. And now the next trick is going to be establishing that transitionary piece that comes down into the teeth and helps us start to make more distinctions so that we can start to separate some of these things. OK, so again, let's look at this. And yeah, about like that. All right, so. Uh, all kinds of weird things are happening with my brushes today. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do some sweepy lines because that's just that's how I like to work. Okay, bada bing. All right, so there's a little rounded, and then we come in. That's actually pretty okay, but if we look at it from a side view, well, it's actually right there, and then it then I create a bit of a roundish shape right there. Okay. So we're mapping stuff. In fact, today's lecture could be not necessary. Could be called not connections. It could be called uh, mapping. You know, that's what we're really trying to understand. So let's undo some of that, and I'm going to bring this forward. We're mapping shapes. There we go. That's probably uh, overkill. Got to be careful. No, we're within range. Give us some of that volume, because we saw some of that volume. Um, but I'm going to keep that volume not a ton. There you go. There we go. OK, and that's going to go nicely into this. Let me set my embed at 4. Embed, embed is what I change more than anything else. And I just want to kind of, I'm going to put a little shape in there that I know is in there. There we go. All right. Lower my draw size so I can get a little bit more subtle. And again, move it forward. Uh, we want to move it, yeah, like that. Okay, because there's one, two, two, three teeth. That's the la that's the third teeth. That's the one that one's doing. Okay, and then as we did this, we noticed that there's a bulbous shape right here. There's an interesting down plane, and then there's a bulbous shape that starts to occur, and that's setting up this line right here that I really love. Um, that's actually on the surface. It's quite fascinating. OK, let me pause two seconds. Do we have audio, folks? Tatiana is saying there's no audio. Audio on YouTube. Joshua, there's audio on Facebook. All right, Tatiana. Got audio. I'm just going to keep trudging forward. There's always the replay. All right, so we're going to continue the mapping there. And there's this shape that's right here. And I see a little bit of a divot there. There we go. All right, so now we've started to create more of the form, right? We're mapping our way through this conversation. This is that line that I know is there. If we look at this, the ridge comes, and then those are really eagle-eyed. You'll actually see that that line extends out into the cheek. So the cheek is actually wider than this. It's this whole width, but within the cheek itself, there's halfway, there's this line that comes in like that. That's pretty fascinating. And then you see it also right here. 
You see how there's that shelf? It's an actual shelf pointing up. That's really cool. You can see that in yourself. Like I'm, I'm looking in my uh, screen right now. Feel in your eyes or around your eye. Don't poke yourself. But you, there's this plane where things change. A lot of people think that's the cheek. That's not the cheek. Um, I'm staring off slightly below camera. <laughs> uh, the cheek is actually up there. Ow. Uh-huh. Poking my eyeball. That's the cheek right there. And then there's this plane right here. That whole thing right there is fascinating. You see this in draftsmen. You see this in sculptors. You know, you go in and you establish this swoosh. I love that. It's one of my favorite um, shapes. Whoops. Come on. I need uh, this brush. There. Now, as we pull away from this, look at how much fidelity we're starting to get. Because really what we're trying to do at this stage is map out some of these different shapes. Um, or I should say this another way. We're mapping out the areas between what we think of as shapes. We're jumping into the unknown and exploring all of this stuff that exists between what we think is actually important. You know, and as you get more uh serious about this work what you end up learning is that this stuff like this line right here that there's no real i mean i haven't found an anatomical term for it right now that's actually the most important line in understanding this entire area here that's the point that's everything to this conversation to me that's the way i see it all right so let's go in and start mapping a couple of other areas and again my my goal here today is just to give you the next step all right so you've done the form and then when you watch most artists work they just stop talking at a certain point because they're mapping right like for example i did this class with hossein diba and an amazing artist and the guy knows exactly what he's doing uh but some of the times when uh, in the class he'll just shut off his brain and start mapping and it is a joy to see but he's not talking about it because these are two different processes it's really hard to merge the two right like a lot of my older lectures just have these crappy sculpts because you can, it's so hard to do both of them i struggle with it for my for eternity and you know for me a better concept is more important than a better sculpt because my mission is to share uh, process with you guys. But I, you know, I miss this hunt, the quiet hunt every now and then. Um, all right, so let's get back into our hunting and I'll do my best to keep talking. Sometimes when we get into this phase, I actually switch my brushes. And so this is a rake brush, this is my rake brush again. Um, I built the rake brush a long time ago in ZBrush when I worked at Pixelogic. Uh, I just don't like the way the brush works right now. So I went in and I, um, I changed a few things. It's using a slightly different alpha. And in terms of the brush, um, I don't remember now what I did. I don't know if I changed any of these features or not. Build up is on there. Um, then there was probably something I did in, I don't think I did anything in depth. That's all pretty basic stuff. Uh, the only other place where something might change is there to there yeah got rid of that um you know and the alpha the alphas become you know a lot more important than you might think like for example ofer was telling me how to build the clay tubes brush and i tried several variations on that um until i just used the one ofer told me to use uh so let's get back to this um rk rake uh, so now the thing i like about this brush is it creates patterning as you're going and you know, artists, creatives have been using the, you know, rake brushes for a really long time. But if I want to get in here and I want to be cleaner about a surface, I can do a lot because I can carve out little shapes like that and start to kind of um, really build out, you know, these long strokes. And this also helps you see what I'm thinking about, right? What's important. So I'm going to stay focused on this area right in here. Um, but I'm going to come in, and one of the things I want to be mindful of is this shape. I want to really lock in this shape right here. And I quite, can't quite see it, but you know, there's this plane that comes in, and then there's the nasal plane. 
Do I have that in mind? Kind of not, right? You see how it's really soft right in there? That's not going to work because that's actually a pretty clean plane that I'm seeing in there. So I'm going to put that into my memory. And I'm going to do a little bit of a trick um, right now. In fact, uh, we'll do this trick with a standard brush so it's really apparent. I'm going to come in and create another line that's going to separate out the, uh, the nasal bone versus the maxilla. Okay, so I'm going to come in and put a line in that goes like, oh, that's not right. We've got to turn that off. Z add like that. There you go. And this line we talked about before actually moves down here and starts to outline the canines and really starts to talk about the, the change in plane from front of the teeth to side of the teeth. Okay. And I'm going to show you that line. You're going to hopefully you're going to be amazed when you see that line now because what do you see right here? Do you see a little line that moves down? And there's form on this side and this form on this side. There's form on both sides of that conversation. So it's good. I put that in. And then I'm going to come in and just reinforce it. And the rake brush is a great one. So you just build that like that. I'm pressing Alt right now. OK. I'm going to erase the outer side of that. A little bit, there we go, and then just there. I keep the line, but I've managed to blur it a little bit. Okay, and then I'm going to come into this one and just chop down a little bit and, and create a really good strong edge there. That's really important, is that strong edge. But then once you have that strong edge and you feel good about the shapes, and so I'm going to just kind of build this line up because what I'm noticing as I look at this triangulation is this volume right there is built up a bit. There's a line right here that I can use, the natural suture line between the bones. This line builds up, gets a little thin, and then moves into the frontal process of the maxilla, or at least what I'm calling the frontal process of the maxilla. Okay, and so we can put our little line in there, that suture line for the frontal bone and all of that. And I think it's right about it's right about there. I don't need it to be so dramatic. There you go. All right, now I'm going to build up, a, like I said, a little bit of volume right here. And then it starts to lose its volume. And let's go ahead and divide this one more time. And I'm not using Dynamesh or any of that stuff, which I probably should. Um, but I'm, I'm just simple sculpting, not trying to complicate my life too much, which is a big, important lesson for me. Okay, build that volume, start to thin it out. And I look for like lines, I look for shapes and swooshes. So if we come back into this, as I'm navigating, I look for a swoosh. Look at that swoosh, there's a swoosh right there. It's beautiful. So I look for those things. You know, and, and I and just try to find a swoosh. I wish I could find a better word for you. But at some point, you just enter into the land with no words, OK? When it gets all crazy like that, I just, I need to dynamesh that. But I don't really want to have to deal with anything right now. So I'm going to suffer that for a little bit longer. After this, I'll probably consider dynameshing it. OK, there we go. And make that a down plane. Put a little bit of this hole right in there. And trim that out a little bit. And then trim that and add a little bit more back to it. OK, and this is tough. What I'm doing right now, it's, this is high level stuff, what I'm organizing in my mind. So if you're not able to do this, that's cool. That just means that's where you are in your journey. It's like, you know. I was there last week. <laughs> you know, it goes a lot faster than you think. Um, and uh, and you know, you, there's always somebody who can see more. 
as well. So here I'm just doing a little bit of my tooling. I'm looking at shapes for volumes and I'm starting to kind of map things out. So specifically what I'm noticing is there's this, in, in certain lights, the form shifts and it comes all the way down here. So I'm over here kind of trying to capture some of that magic. Uh, there you go. This is like one of my favorite things is this, that brush, <sighs> beautiful. Okay, I'm not saying I'm sculpting beautiful, I just mean like it's, this is just, uh, when it really starts to come together, I might hate it tomorrow, but that's not, I'm not gonna let that stop me from enjoying this moment. That's a hard fought lesson, my friend. Many a time I'd let it destroy me. Okay, let's put that in there and there. You see, I love sweeps, boom, boom, and these build up form. Okay, all right, now, next thing I gotta do just get rid of that line, which I can do just by filling it in. The line will still be there in terms of, you know, the basics. And it might be wise to set your embed a little low when you do this, because you're really just trying to fill in space, right? We're not trying to add a lot. And um, so I just want to fill it in. And yeah, I'm being a little haphazard about how I fill it in. Um, but you see, it's still there. Oh my God, sorry guys. How long was I, was it looking at me? <laughs> Oops, let's undo that. Just in case we were a little bit fuzzy on it. There. Hit OK. I'm going to come back into rake brush. Ah, it happened right when I set my rake brush to one. OK. So the depth in bed, I set that to one. And, you know, we, we lost a lot of that. OK, I know. There you go. Now I'm just going to go through that again. And there. See, form's still there, but it's kind of disappeared. And if I wanted to, I could re-emphasize it. Um, but, you know, for right now, I think that's pretty rock solid. I'm pretty comfortable with that. Okay. Now, I'm going to go through and just continue my exploration of shapes. And, you know, I'm looking for areas uh, between the forms and trying to map things out. I feel kind of confident in, in this shape that I built up right there, this rounder shape. I'm going to separate that rounder shape from the orbit, right? Like we've got that separated right there. There. And that's a lot of what we do is just go in and start to kind of separate things. Okay, I'm going to flatten this. You see how wonky this is? and uh, unprofessional looking. So the easiest way, I've got my rake brush set to one. Super easy way to go in there and create clean form. And sexy form, like that's just really nice. I'm also gonna go in and start to kind of define some edges, right? So if we look at this, that's a good strong kind of sharpish edge. So I'm going to work that edge to help me really capture that. And you work it from both sides. Things in CG can get infinitely sharper than they do in the real world. So you do have to be careful. Don't be afraid to go in and blunt that a little bit. There, like that. OK. 
Okay. Big strokes, though. Otherwise, it still looks amateurish. And don't f don't be afraid to kind of design it. So I'll go in and add a little bit and subtract a little bit. Make a big stroke, and it already starts to look clear. See that silhouette, this line right here? You know? I don't know. I don't, I don't quite believe it. So I'm going to make a big stroke and press Alt. And then I'm going to press Alt here. And, and when I do that, I'm just going around. And that looks better, right? So I don't need to even know what I'm doing, per se. I just need to know, you know that I'm going to emphasize order. I'm going to organize it somehow. All right, I'm having too much fun here. And I'm not going to go too much further in this lecture because I really want you to get in and start to explore some of this mapping, specifically in this brow, which is an incredibly complex area, um, especially when we come down into this. So when we start to map this stuff out, how, how do we start to make sense out of it? Okay, well, one, there's a suture line, but the suture lines don't necessarily make everything. So I'm analyzing and I'm rotating this around. And what I'm kind of noticing is, I wish I'll have a dry erase next time. The line that's right here continues up and it creates this beautiful plane. That's the border. And it just goes right up there. So it'd be like, let's look at this from this view. And where can I put that? Yeah, up there. Okay, And there's this line that goes right there. I see it. So I've got um, the rake brush. I'm going to put Z sub on. And what I'm going to do right now is just work to flatten that. There you go. There, I flatten that. And then I'm going to flatten the other side of it because that's, you know, that's how it works. There we go. Okay, bada bing. Okay, there's a little bit of a divot right there. This thing still has a bit of a form. So, and then I'm going to separate that. Turn Z, add on. This isn't the best brush to build with, especially when you only have one hand. But ultimately, it starts to look a little bit cooler, I think. You know, we see that line shaping straight up like this. And this is you making an artistic decision, not necessarily just responding, but making an artistic decision with what you see there. And, you know, there's several other artistic decisions I got to make because this still looks vague. So every square inch, you know, you're fighting for every square inch in your sculpt. That's what you're really doing. It's fighting to distinguish things. You know, you're a mapper at the end of the day. And you don't want to work for this person's map or that person's map. You want to use their maps for your purposes. So get in and start to distinguish these elements and find them. So the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to start to get in and really start to map out this, this zygomatic, which a lot of people would look at that and be like, well, you're done. No, no. I mean, come on. This is child's play at the end of the day. Uh, the stuff that they used to do, the stuff that other artists do today, you can go deep in this. And that's what we want to do in sculpting. This isn't a character artist class where the whole point is, is you have to go the whole breadth. You have to get it into engine. This is sculpting. This is a deep dive. Let's learn this. Let's learn how to turn a molehill into a mountain that we can explore and then when somebody comes in and they look at it, they just say, I can't believe you put so much attention to detail in. And you're like, yeah, that was fun. That's what we want, right? So let's get into that. I already know and I've already seen. So this last little bit, I'm going to kind of shut my brain, my talking brain off a little bit. And I'm going to go in. And respond because you know you can't do both so I see what I see is a stronger flatter plane right there and by stronger I just is what I'm really saying is flatter and it goes both ways like that yep 
yeah, definitely seen a flatter plane there and a flatter plane there. And then it's interrupted by that line that we talked about. And I see a, a divot in there. That, that move I just did right there, one of my teachers had just lost his shit. If you saw me do that, because it's like anathema to him. Okay, and that's too far out. So I'm going to move that a little bit. There we go. And I need to add a little bit of more love in there. Because that ridge doesn't really disappear. Okay, and get a little bit of that bulbous form right in there. I see a little bit of like a, it's pushing in. Not sure what's happening in there. All right, my friend, there we go. Can you see we've got a lot more interesting structure? I mean, I got a lot more that I can put in here, but I've been fighting just for this um, structure, you know, so to speak. Now we could go in and put some half tones in there and make that really sing, but I, I kind of love what we've established right now. And um, and I think it represents a lot of, of really good stuff. Um, I do see a line that I want to push further up so I see that this line comes and goes like that. And so I just want to give that a little bit of life and really build that interior of the eye socket. There. OK. Now, I don't, I'm, I've stopped looking at the reference. That's kind of an important thing I didn't talk about. I'm not really putting floor on and looking at it and matching that anymore because there's no correlation you know this reference now needs to sit outside of you um, like you need to have this somewhere off to the side um, you need to have the skull off to the side but you know we've done the bulk of that work right now and we've done a, a pretty good job of elucidating and building some of the connective tissue and mapping the connective tissue really um, all over the place where we would go from here you know I can't hypothesize uh, too much but I'd say we might start moving down into this area we might start establishing clarity in the ramus moving that down into the body of the mandible uh, really defining this oblique line is what they call it and getting some clarity on the chin uh, there's a lot we could do we could start to really uh, elaborate on this temporal fossa that's right in here with the occipital and the temporal um, but we've done, I think, a fairly acceptable job here. I'm going to kind of move that in a tiny bit because I'm a stickler. Although, as I look at reality, see, that's me doing something I think needs to happen. And I look at reality, and, um, and that's not what needs to happen, right? Like, we look at that, and you see, look at that from a side view. You see how deep that is? Man. So we always have these assumptions that we need to worry about. But it does seem like that nose needs to come out a little bit more. Like that. And that should go up a little bit higher. That's going to cause me problems later, so I'm going to have to get clarity there. But there we go, my friends. Next step is for you to do that yourself. Follow this procedure of starting to map out areas and look at the connections between them and start to analyze, you know, what is one shape versus the other shape? What are some lines that you can start to draw? What are some planes that you can map out? Where are the like the mountains in there? Where are the valleys in there? You know, and really just build these connective um, 
these connections. You know, that's the kind of key. All right, have fun, and uh, I'll see you next time. Oops, that was a little loud. All right, so those of you here watching this live, now a reminder, this is just these quarantine talks. We're all quarantined. I mean, I'm gonna go walk the dog, so I'm not like quarantined inside the house. Uh, but we're pretty close. Everybody, I, We see neighbors, we stay six feet away from each other. Uh, other side of the road, we're yelling and talking. The kids are yelling and talking. Oh my God, crazy times. Anyways, while we're here, I thought, um, you know, when I'm nervous, like, I don't know, I can't actually explain it. Uh, but I just have been wanting to get back to sculpting and that's my happy place. Uh, it's not, you know, the best place to go find a job and, but it is a core skill that when you master this, it does improve a lot of things in your life. And right now it just makes me happy. That's the key for me right now. Um, so I'm recording this class. I'm streaming it to you live. Um, these are here. This class will eventually be. Uh, somewhere else but um, you know the goal for me is we're all here let's get into the found some foundations and dig into this and if I can make you be a better sculptor during this time wouldn't have been such a bad thing right all right thank you I'll see you in the next one thanks Christian thanks Ashley be no me 89 yeah they're well the first four days I skipped day five um, so they're just on they're just in YouTube. They should be in YouTube, or you can go to our uh, Vertex School Facebook. It's a recent change, so it's kind of hard to Google it. So you can always just go to go uh, vertexschool.com and just go down to the social links there and uh, go from there. Be know me. Thank you, my friend. Uh, there was a chat question here. I didn't answer Petar the chat because I was kind of recording a class that needed to exist outside of, of uh, all of that. Um, what's the difference between setting the depth? Versus changing, this is a great question. Um, and in, when I taught the CERT program, this was kind of key uh, to the whole, to, to understanding this. So your depth is basically the maximum speed that your car can go. Your Z intensity is like the torque. It's like, how fast is it going to get there? How fast is it going to get to your maximum intensity? Um, I go, you know, like I, I set my intensity somewhere between 20 and 10. And that's just a good ramp up speed. And then after that, the most important thing is the depth. Hope that makes sense. All right, Binomi. Glad to hear. Thanks, Dominic. Hey, Adam. Of course. All right, my friends. Have an amazing uh, weekend and enjoy your quarantine. <laughs>